Hey one hey all, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at something again a little bit different for me because I don't usually look at masterpiece items. I'm so hard on them. Nevertheless, thanks to our buddy Maximal10, I'm getting to take a look today at a masterpiece that came out I believe in about 2009, 10, 12, I don't know, a decade ago, roughly. What is it? It's Masterpiece Grimlock. And I've always heard good things about this guy, although some say that his size is a little bit diminutive. Um, is he good? Is he not? What do I think? Well, we're about to find out in the latest Got By True review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light him up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that, man, in the description down below. Also in the description down below. And if you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube. Become a channel member. And this is Grimlock, the masterpiece of Grimlock. I always feel like MPs are an uphill climb to me. I, I nitpick and I pick out the imperfections because, and I've said this a million times, when I hear the word masterpiece, it has to be perfect. If it's not then I don't, I don't believe in the term, you know what I mean? Like, if it's not perfect, I can't get behind it being called a masterpiece. If there's room for improvement, it's not a masterpiece. What about this guy? I've heard such mixed things about this guy over the years, and I appreciate Maximal 10 letting me take a look at it. I believe that this is the Toys R Us exclusive version, which is slightly different. It has a little less chrome, and uh, things like the teeth and the claws are a little more... They're still... They're still sharp, per se, but not as much as they were with the Takara offering um, and the spring that's in the Jaws weekend. But we'll see all of that in a little bit. I'm intrigued to look at this, most especially next to the recent Studio Series 86. Does this thing still stand up? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And yes, indeed, we kind of jumped down the rabbit hole known as Masterpiece once again. This time, looking back at Grimlock, this is, I believe, the Toys R Us exclusive version. The reason I think it's the Toys R Us exclusive version is because we uh, seem to have more gold rather than chrome paint. We do have chrome here. And the claws on the hands and the teeth seem to be slightly dulled. Plus, there's a button on the side of the head for closing the mouth that was very strong on the Takara version is my understanding here like it it, it does it closes but it's not it's not the strongest thing in the world as for the teeth though they are chromed in beautiful silver chrome they are I don't want to say sharp they're not sharp but you know I'm they're certainly shaped but not sharp if that makes sense uh, the hands here, well, the arms here they can move kind of all the way around. We have an elbow on the little arm. The claws um, are they are all three individual? Yeah, all three are individual. Again, I think they've probably been dulled down from what they were in the Japanese release for this. In this mode, a couple of gimmicks that we have. The tail, if you move it back and forth, the head moves back and forth. I, I don't... Cool, I guess. I'm not really sure why that is, but... Uh, I, it, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I've heard issues of him standing up proper. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think he's standing up fine. I, the tail's off the ground. He... I, works for me. The legs here can go back and forward because their shoulders out that far. We have, because of the elbow, we have, you know, a bend that deep. Uh, I'll note now, too, there's a button back on this arm. It's, or leg, if you will. It's for an LED that's in the hand that allows the sword and the uh, blaster to light up. We'll see those shortly. 
The other gimmicks here, um, let's see, I think the only other one that I know of is the I one. I, I, again, some of this I might miss because this is on loan to me by friend of the channel Maximal10, so there's only like so much I have here. Uh, the head can pop up, and then if you want, you can take this section here with the eyes, and it's spring-loaded, and you can bring it out and turn it like that if you want it to look more like the G1 plastic offering. I don't know. This I, it never this never sat right with me. I'm an animation guy, so I see this and I think red eyes Decepticon, right? But like you know, to each their own. If you prefer the red eyes, I mean, you can you can certainly do it. Um, for me, I prefer. If I can get it now. It's a bit of a nuisance to get, to be honest with you. Where it is where it is spring loaded? There. I prefer the blue, but I mean, that's purely aesthetic choice. Um, why am I not getting this to fit in here correctly? And so I had to fiddle with the eyes just a little bit more. Apparently they had to go around the full, I guess, 360 to get back to where they originally were. They evidently only fit one way, so something just to note, um, you know, not a big deal. <laughs> Here he is next to the Studio Series 86 Grimlock and the Dino Mode obviously bigger. I think both look good for different reasons. The 86 is like my go-to. Um, would it be nice to have chromed tail and arms? Maybe, but again, on the program, on the show, this kind of like bone white, light gray that's on the Studio Series would definitely match better. I do like the teeth of the Masterpiece more, undoubtedly. Um, and I like the stature and the height of the Masterpiece more, but you know what, like neither is bad, so here's how they look obviously together. Here are the instructions that come with old Grimlock, and you can see that like there's a lot to them. They're, eh, they're okay. Here's Grimlock's mostly translucent sword. The handle that I'm holding onto is also translucent. When you put it in the hand with the LED, it lights up red. Um, and just for our fun interest sake, here it is next to the Fall of Cybertron sword. Him definitely not kisser. He is most assuredly a king, as this crown would definitely prove. Nice chrome looks good. Here we have his blaster again. The hand is clear plastic, as are the two um, barrels. They light up red when put in the hand with the LED. Uh, just at an interest sake, here it is next to the Studio Series 86 blaster. The 86 blaster actually bigger. Go figure. So, as far as being a dinosaur goes, he's great. As far as being a Grimlock goes, he's great. It, this is a really good Grimlock. I dig it. I do. I like it. Um, is it perfect? Well, we're going to talk about that after we do the transformation, which we're going to get into now. We close the mouth, and really what I like to do is sort of begin by opening the chest. I wish that these pieces could angle up a little bit more. Just to get out of the way, I think it would be nice. I, I loosen the head, and then I tend to kind of put the arms like that, just so I can ratchet this back. And it does ratchet back, as does that one. Uh, we have this nice, like, gold-colored yellow in here. I almost wish that that was used here. This gold is closer to the gold used on the 86 actually, um, but it's, you know, it's fine. We take this on his back. On his back, there is a little notch down here, I think, and it goes into a, like a slot on his head. Yeah, and holds that in place. Um, you can kind of see, you can kind of see how this is coming along now. The body here, we can sort of sort of kind of bring up and right now it's not really going to lock in we just kind of want to get up and out of the way so that we can deal with the legs the legs on this guy they're the tumultuous part they're the trickiest part no doubt about it so we begin by splitting the tail now I've heard some people say that the tail is really difficult to split and the legs are really difficult to split uh, I guess we're about to find out There's the tail, and now the legs. You gotta um, go slow with it. It's not 
It doesn't seem too bad. It just seems like you gotta go kinda, I don't even wanna say delicate with it, but sorta of slow with it. I'm gonna get the legs apart here cause it's gotta be boring just watching me take the legs apart. Yeesh. Trying to get these apart. I mean, it's just pegs and, and peg holes, but for some reason it wanted to fight me. That being said, I'm not going to grade it down because of that. I, I, it may have just been me being cumbersome, but like in all honesty, it's just pegs and ports that go up the inner part of the legs. It's not hard. Then the leg comes out on the side, which I think is kind of neat. This piece here folds up into the foot. This should come down the, I think, rest of the way. Yeah, we bring that back and then the knee should be able to come down here the rest of the way. If I can, there, get it down. And then the whole thing here, really, it, it's, it's a bit ingenious because you do, maybe I should get this out of the way, you do sort of push that up fold this in, and then this whole piece folds up like that. Woof! And then this can fold back. Uh, basically the way we do it is we take it like this and fold it all the way up. We bring it all the way out, and then this does fold up and in, and then we turn the leg around, and then this piece folds up behind to finish off the foot. We angle out the hips here and bring that down. And we angle out this hip and bring it down. Then, with the entire torso kind of held, we should be able to slide it down. You know you're doing it right when and if the Autobot symbol comes up in the um, like main torso. And then you give it like a snug push, straighten up the head, straighten out the leg, bring this arm down and bring this arm down. Then we can open this up and hopefully just flip out a hand and close it. Um, this is the one that has the LED. Oh, the LED does light up in there. I didn't think it did. Look at that. Um, and we can open up this one and flip out that hand. I don't think this one's articulated. Um, the thumb is. I don't feel like the fingers are, but the thumb is slightly articulated on that hand. But boom, in the end, here we have Grimlock in his dinosaur mode. Okay, so here he is with his crown on. It only goes on one way. There's a little notch. It fits loosely, but it goes on. The blaster is in this hand over here, the one with the articulated fingers. There is a little nub on the blaster and a little hole on the side of the hand base. Not in the hand, not in the palm, but like kind of on the finger. And you put the little um, peg, maybe, it might be three millimeter, into the little port. His hand doesn't really hold it. If you have all the fingers open, it would still stay there. Then over here we have the sword. Again, you could put the, the blaster over here if you want. I don't know if you can see it, but maybe you can. It's, it's lighting it up anyway. Uh, it would do the same thing with the, I mean, you can, see, you can see the light in the hand there, right? I think, I hope you can see it. Um, take that off. So, I guess that's, I guess that's, oh, take that off. And, I mean, if I just put the blaster here, maybe, yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but the very tips here turn red. Uh, if, I'm sure if I had it darker, you'd be able to see it. So, okay, let's get into scores for this guy. First, the transformation. I think it's an okay transformation. The legs are a lot. The body tends to flop about until you push it down. Maybe I could have pushed it down earlier than what I did and saved myself some hassle. I do wish that these wings angled up a little bit more. Like they do angle up a little bit, but I wish they angled up a little bit more than what they do. Uh, and I think that's about it. 
So the transformation, I'm going to say, is a solid nine. It's very good, maybe even a nine and a half. It's very good, but I do wish that the legs were a little bit more intuitive. The thing that is a saving grace with the legs is the way that it kind of folds up once you know what you're doing with it is kind of brilliant because you have a bunch of moving parts all at once. It makes it difficult to kind of show it on, on camera, but you do get a lot that folds up in here. And the linchpin for a lot of it is really this piece right here. As soon as you push that in, then this whole section here comes up and then finally you can just flip the tail up. It takes a little bit of getting used to the transformation to kind of get that in your mind. In terms of look for the guy, I mean, it looks like Grimlock, though arguably these uh, blue, red, and green pieces here should be more rectangular than square, but that's arguable. Some would say, no, it should be square, and maybe it should. I'm not sure where these pieces of detailing on his arms come from. I don't remember them from the animation, but it may have been sticker detailing in the G1 release. Speaking of detailing of cartoon versus the G1 release, the eyes here are a beautiful uh, kind of metallic blue, uh, maybe even a chrome blue. There's a little button on the back and if you slide it up they become red. So if you want red eyes you can have red eyes. If you want blue eyes you can have blue eyes. Depends on which accuracy you want to go for. The gold is really where it should be. Arguably the shoulders are a little high. Maybe they shouldn't be as high as that but that's debatable. Um, same with the silver here. I don't remember silver. Maybe it was sticker detailing on the G1 release. It certainly wasn't in the program. I'm going to say again, it's obviously Grimlock. Uh, I like, I, I'm not a chrome guy, but I like the chrome here. I'm going to say it's a solid 9, 9.5. It's, it's pretty great. Then we get to the articulation. So, so far the guy's not perfect, but he's a 9.5. Remember, to be a masterpiece in my mind, to be perfect, you need 10s across the board. This guy follows just short of that. As for the articulation, we already know the dinosaur articulation. In this mode, the head goes left, right, oh, um, a lot. Maybe all the way around? Yeah, all the way around. Uh, it can look way up, can kind of look down. The arms here, they can go forward and back. I mean, they can go all the way around, right? Um, only out that far. That's a bummer. That limitation is a big bummer. Uh, bicep swivel, which is cool. The elbows to 90 degrees. Any more? I think 90 degrees is it. Wrist swivel, thumb moves on this one. On the other hand over here, we have the fingers more articulated. There's a base pin. The first finger is by itself, but I mean, he's always kind of got curled fingers. The thumb also moves. These Claws are die cast. They move as they often do on Grimlock, as I think they always do on Grimlock, and I don't know why. We do have a waist, I think. We do, but it's sort of it's sort of impinged by this gray piece back right here. Um, so it's yes, he has a waist, but it's a bit limited. Uh, leg can go all the way forward, and it holds quite solid all the way back. It feels like friction though, not ratchet, but it holds nicely, so that's all that matters at the end of the day. Out to the side, again, holds nicely. Thigh swivel, we have heavy ratchet knees to, for sure, 90 degrees. Um, I wish the torso stayed locked a little better than what it does too, to be honest with you. At least on this copy. I'm not going to mark it kind of down for that because that might just be the age of this copy, right? Um, and then the toes go forward and you notice this piece moving, which I think is neat. Not much, like a, a slight, slight ankle rocker, very, very slight. The shoulders are the big story here. The shoulders are a little bit abysmal, if I'm honest. I wish that they were better. I mean, just look at them next to the 86. The 86 goes all the way out, and the masterpiece that's supposed to be perfect can't? I don't know. I get it. Some people will say, yeah, but the 86 is newer, newer engineering. They knew how to put a shoulder hinge in, uh, what, 10 years ago. It's not rocket science. They knew that they could do that then. It's been done before. 
Um, why they didn't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Now, at the end of the day, here are the two robots next to each other. Naturally, the masterpiece, a little bit taller, a little bit lankier, too. Like, I feel like the 86 is a bit bulkier. So, it depends. Do you want a more slender Grimlock or a bulkier one? My take is kind of unique here. I'm going to say that for the articulation, he's about, he's about an eight and a half. The shoulders really are a bummer for me. So overall, the guy is still a nine. He's not a masterpiece. He's not perfect. But he is a strong Grimlock. To me, I feel like if you're going for cartoon accuracy, I think the 86 might be the way to go. But I think if you're going for either the G1, like plastic, like a rendition, an, uh, I, I, an homage to that, or if you want an excellent homage to the like Marvel Comics version of Grimlock, I think the MP is the way to go. I'm not an MP guy, I wouldn't call it an MP, but depending on the homage you're going for, it might be just the answer that you've been looking for for your collection. Overall score for the MP? He's going to fall in with an overall 9. And here we are once again, and here's Grimlock once again. So I love the look of this. I think it's great. I love the chrome on the tail and on the body. Um, the transformation is all right. I do feel like the legs are a little bit cumbersome. There's a lot going on there. It's, it's neat, um, and it's not hard once you figure it out. But the way that the hips go down and don't collapse all the way down sometimes means that I have trouble tabbing in both of the legs back here together when going to uh, dinosaur mode. I think going to robot mode is the slightly easier way to go. I do wish that these upper chest pieces were able to move a little bit easier, but overall it's a very familiar feeling transformation and I, there's a lot here that I do like. Articulation in dino mode is great. The articulation in robot mode is mostly okay, but you saw those shoulders. Uh, bummer. I mean, real, real bummer for something claiming to be perfect, and that's the most lateral movement out that you get. I can't get behind that. Um, and then the look. The look is tremendous. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, <laughs> the paint is great. It's, yeah, he looks tremendous. I prefer, personally, the Studio Series 86. It fits better for my collection and my aesthetics and tastes. But I'm not going to say that this isn't good. It is quite good but it's not quite perfect, and therefore, it's not quite Masterpiece. Let me know what you think about Masterpiece Grimlock. Uh, have you replaced him with some of the, for example, third-party offerings? Does he still stand as your Grimlock, or what? How do you think he's aged? I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you if you're in a position to help the channel to grow. You can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member, baby. While you're at it, hit the subscribe button, stick around, have some fun with us. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you right there, you do make a difference. Don't let anybody say that you don't. You absolutely do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres of the old fashioned way, baby, right here, inside the videos.